Today I'm going to demonstrate how you can <coughs> use Excel to make a workbook so that you can project your vacation earned. If you're like me, you often wonder how much vacation will I have by such and such a date. So I'm going to show you a quick way that you can use Excel and the power that's included in that program to help you do that. So if you will first navigate to where you have Excel and open it, it will ask you what kind of workbook do you want open. Just open a blank one and you can expand it to your full screen. As you can see, if you're new to Excel, Excel is comprised of columns which are designated by letters and by col and rows which are designated by numerals. So we are going to start in the upper left hand corner cell. Each one of these boxes is called a cell and we are going to first label our columns so that we know what we have and we'll label our first date our second one we will label vacation earned and I'm just hitting tab each time I go over to the next cell or box you can also just use your mouse and left click and then in the last one we will list vacation used now you'll notice that it would appear that what we had typed in this cell has disappeared, but actually the way that Excel works is that unless you do something to change it, the boxes are of a fixed dimension, and so anything that goes beyond that box will be covered up by anything that's written in the next cell. The way you can fix that is you can go up to the top, there's little dividers between each of these letters, and when it turns into a line with two arrows you can double left click and that will expand that cell to the width of whatever is the widest in that column so now we're gonna start listing dates but before we do that since it's already the year's already started and you might have a starting balance of vacation we're going to list starting that's how much uh, starting vacation we have. In my case, I don't have very much. So this is the vacation that I'm starting with. And then underneath starting, I'm, and obviously for yourself, you'll list whatever yours might be. Now I'm going to list the dates on which I will accrue vacation. So in my case, I will accrue vacation this Friday, which happens to be the 26th. And so I'm going to write out 226 to show that. So, And as long as you write it in some format that, some standard format, Excel's pretty good about recognizing it. And you can do it with dashes, you can do it with slashes. I'll do it with slashes here. And then I accrue vacation every two weeks, so the next time I will accrue vacation is on 311. And we'll do one more entry, and then I'm going to show you a quick way that you can propagate all the remaining dates so that you don't have to look on a calendar and try to remember them and so forth. So after the 11th, two weeks from that is the 25th. Oops. And then, using the power of Excel, if we left click, hold it, and drag down, you'll see that there's this little box here in the lower right hand corner. If you left click and drag that down, and as you can see, dates are it, for the, each box, it, it shows you the date if you were to stop there. So we can see that it's indeed figured out how to do, to, it's recognized the pattern, and it's doing two weeks for every box. Now, don't worry if you get some of these boxes that show these the pound symbol. If you just, again, go back up here and double click, or and it didn't work, for, but if you drag it over just a little bit, then it's just that there were the numerals were too wide to fit inside the box and so it was showing you that there are numerals there 
I just couldn't show you the actual ones. So now I accrue at the rate of a little over five hours every two weeks. And so I could just add the 5.23 to the 0.4 and do the math myself all the way down. But again, using the power of Excel, we can do that in a fashion that will make it a lot easier for us and less work. So in Excel, if you hit the equal button, which is up towards the end of the number bar, um, just past the zero, then it w Excel recognizes that you're putting in a formula, which means, uh, you know, just like in math, you're, you're writing out something for it to figure to do math. And so if we reference where our starting balance is, so in this case, this cell is, re is understood by Excel to be B2. That is what this cell is. So if I say B2, and you see how it outlines that cell, so that tells me that I've told it the correct location to, to, to reference. And then I say plus, or I enter the plus, and the amount of vacation, now in my case, I earn 5.23 hours every two weeks. In your case, you'll want to enter whatever that amount is. And that hit, then you hit enter you can see that it did the math to figure out how much vacation I will have as of this Friday if I accrue 5.23 every two weeks and to have a starting balance of 0.4 hours. Now here I can list any vacation that I have used in the last two weeks. In this case I'm going to say zero but let's just to see well actually I'm getting ahead of myself so what we want to do in our equation right now, all it does is figure out adding the amount every two weeks, which is great, but we actually want it to figure out how much we've accrued, including time that we may have used. So what we're going to do is go back into our equation. And if you understand math concepts, you'll understand that by putting these brackets around our original equation we're telling it to first figure out that part first figure out how much we've accrued and then to subtract whatever vacation we've used and so once again we will want to reference what the cell is and Excel understands this cell to be C2 so we type in C2 and again we get this box telling us showing us that we've referenced the correct box and then we hit enter now the amount in here will figure out as of 226 it will take the amount of vacation that we started with add the amount we accrue so in your case if you accrue more than 5.23 say you accrue eight hours every two weeks or whatever period of time mm -hmm then this amount here will be 8. And then right here, we don't want to put the amount that we could put in here. So if I had used two hours of vacation prior to 226, I wouldn't want to in our equation, as you notice, when I click over here, the equation's gone because we're only doing the math in this column. Over here, we're just listing the actual amount of vacation used. But we want it to reference where to get that information. Now you may be asking, well, what good does that do me? What about these other dates and columns? Well, once again, just like we did over here to get Excel to extrapolate what every two weeks, what that date would be. Now we can once again, grab this lower right hand corner and drag it down. And it will show us all at 5.23 hours per every two weeks, how much we would accrue by any date on here, or the date, of course, that we actually accrue. So now keep in mind that this is also taking into account any amount that you have vacation you've used. So if I put here that I've taken two hours of vacation, you can see that it adjusts all the corresponding, all the following accrued hours because it's subtracting that. If later on I took another two, once again, it adjusts it. As you subtract those out, it fixes that as well. So now you have built a workbook 
that will forecast through this column your hours of vacation that you'll earn and if you enter the amount of hours you have used up to a certain date then it will forecast what that change would be so hopefully you will find this useful and this concludes my presentation of how to build a workbook to project your leave or leave is a military term but your vacation